So I'm going to talk to you about air resistance today. Now, clearly skiing is all about forces, and I suggest whenever you're thinking about forces, think about pairs of forces. We're here in Morzine in the French Alps, and we're going to do some physics of skiing. The force that is accelerating you down the slope is the component of your weight in the direction of the slope. So don't worry too much about that, but essentially your weight is the force, it's a gravitational force, which is taking you down the hill. There are forces that oppose your motion, and some of them are very useful to you in slowing yourself and controlling your descent, and that's the friction. And air resistance is something that is always opposing your motion. When you want to go really fast, you crouch down into what we call the shoes position, which is a very streamlined position. We don't say aerodynamic position, we say streamlined position. The air rushes over it in streamlined, it means that you don't get this as much drag, you don't get this turbulent motion behind you. But even then, even in that streamlined position, you're going to reach a point where actually the downwards component of your weight, the downhill component of your weight, is equal to the air resistance pushing you back, and you can't accelerate anymore. Okay, we call that a kind of terminal velocity, okay, it's your maximum velocity. It's going to be a steady speed, and it's a situation where your weight equals the drag forces, the air resistance force on you. And we say that satisfies Newton's first law. So the forces are balanced and therefore there's no acceleration. Not no movement, you're still moving and in some cases moving very fast down the hill. The forces are balanced, which means that there's no acceleration. And when you come out of that shoot, when you stand up on the skis and open your body out, then suddenly you've got a lot more drag, a lot more air resistance. And that means there's a resultant force backwards, and so you decelerate. You lose speed, you, you, you get a negative change in speed or a negative acceleration. So remember when there is a resultant force down the slope, so a net force of more force down the slope than is slowing you down, you're going to accelerate. And when there is a resultant force up the slope, then you're going to decelerate. And that the upwards force is going to be the air resistance or they're going to be friction. And clearly, you're going to be able to use friction to control your descent to make a resultant force up the slope when you want to slow down. So I hope that was useful to you. I hope that's going to help you with your understanding so you're more confident and so that you enjoy your physics and so you do better in those exams. If you've got any comments, then do post them below. And if you feel like that was the type of video for you, why not subscribe to see some more.